Hello everyone. In this chapter, uh, we will look at a concept called logical effort. Uh, we will look at uh, and introduce the concept of logical effort, how logical effort can be used in estimating the delay to a wave, and moving forward, how to estimate, how to analyze multi stage logic effort. Then we come to choosing in the best number of stages using the concept. Using the same concept, we we'll look at one example, one or two examples, uh, and then we'll conclude this topic. Uh, now, when we uh, let's say you are uh, in the initial phases of starting a design, that that is, you are starting, you are building up the gates and building up a circuit from those gates, then we are we are faced with a uh, array of choices. Uh, we should choose. What is the best circuit topology for a function? How many stages uh, of logic will be used today? How big the transistor should be, and, and so on. There, there are a lot of lot of choices. Available. Now, logical effort is a method uh, which allows us to make these decisions. It uses a very simple model of delay. Uh, that is, it uses only gate delays. It doesn't mention anything about the network delay. It allows the calculations on a paper. It helps us making rapid comparisons between various alternatives available. It, we can we can choose number of stages, we can choose the gate type, whether to use NAND or MOR or to use inverters, or how many inverters to use, and so on. It takes uh, advantage of the symmetries level, the symmetries which are already existing in the circuit topology. During the course of this lecture, it will be advisable to. Uh, Get hold of a pen and paper because there are some formulae here and there will be some calculations. So it will help a lot if you already have a pen and paper. Now, uh, uh, just to uh, give you a big picture, this logical effort is purely a method which is used on pen and paper. It is, it is the usefulness of this method in, in present times is limited to understanding the, the multi state networks. In during this course, you will never use this method to do anything. That is, the synthesis tools will do everything for you. For example, if you are designing a, let's say you are designing a decoder, for example, so you will already have a library of cells available. For example, you have two input nine, three input nine, four input nine, depending on on the kind of library you use. Plus, you will also have. Uh, the so the, the design compiler, for example, is a tool which tests synthesis once in a while. So that tool will automatically do stuff for you. That is, it will choose what gate to use. It will choose how many stages to use in the network. Obviously, depending on some input constraints we give. But uh, just to emphasize, this logical effort will only make us it will help us in understanding the multi-stage networks. How do Increasing or decreasing number of stages affect delay, and so on. So, uh, the formulae given here or the examples given here, they are just used to uh, explain the concept. They will not be used in a practical way. Now, uh, let's take an example of a design. So, there's a memory designer called Ben Hidden. He is working for a motor oil uh, some chip, uh, uh, which is an automated processor. Now, uh, what this memory designer is asked to do is asked to design a decoder for a register file. Register file is nothing but a memory or a bank of registers. The specifications of this design, uh, please note, we are only uh, in this example. In this example, we will only design the four to fifteen bit decoder, assuming the register file is already present. So we will only look at this circuit. So the specification are that uh, this decoder is used to address a uh, 16 word register file. So that means this, this memory bank here has 16 words, and each word is of 32 bits. Each bit in this register file presents a load of three unit size transistor. We will see how that is used later. Uh, we assume that three bit, uh, four bit address, and four bit address complement bits are available. Now each input may drive 10 unit size transistors. We will see the use of this. So the designer needs to decide how many stages to use, how large should each state be, and how fast can decoder operate. 
So let's see uh, let's see the concept of logical effort and we will call this problem logical effort. Now uh, let us let us express the delay in a process independent unit that is it. Uh, so we introduce a time constant called tau which is a PRC. This is a technology dependent parameter so it has some values for example it is about 12 PS in monetary nanometer about 40 PS in pound system nanometer and so on. Now we express the delay uh, to be the absolute delay divided by tau. So delay absolute is technology dependent, tau is technology dependent correspondingly d the logical delay is technology independent. Now uh, a delay of a gate has or a, or a network or a multi state network has two components d is equal to f plus t, f is the effort delay that is how much effort does a gate have to do to drive an external network? So this is called stage effort or effort delay. Again, it has two components G and H. G is the logical effort which measures the ability of the gate to deliver a current. This measurement it is with respect to a unit inverter. So, let us say we, we assume that the unit inverter has logical effort of 1, that is G is equal to 1. Now we will uh, compare all gates against this unit inverter and calculate their logical effort. H is the electrical effort that is it is the effort of the fan out of driving the fan out. It is the ratio of the output capacitance of a gate discounting the internal parasitic capacitance that is the output capacitance when calculated will not contain the parasitic capacitance. The ratio is of that capacitance to the input capacitance seen by the gate. Since the output capacitance represents the fan out or the load on the stage, this is also called the fan out effect. So, F is equal to GH and delay is equal to F plus T. T here is the parasitic delay. Just to repeat the concept, parasitic delay represents the delay of a gate which drives no load. It is nothing but the internal parasitic capacitance of the gate as seen by drain or source. So, uh, this is a straight line on a plot of let us plot D versus H. Now, for a particular gate uh, in isolation, H will be a variable since it is represents the fan out, T will be known since it is the intrinsic capacitance. It is dependent on the intrinsic capacitance. Similarly, G will be known since we know that since G is fixed for a particular gate type, we will see that in the, in the next coming slide. So, we plot D versus H and see uh, how does it look like? It is a straight line equation. So, uh, so the parasitic delay uh, is seen here, it is the uh, it is a fixed delay. For example, for an inverter, the parasitic delay is 1. For, uh, for two input NAND gate, the parasitic T is equal to 2, G is equal to 4 by 3, we will see how G is arrived at. So, this is the equation D is equal to 4 by 3 H plus 2. Similarly, for inverter D is equal to H plus plus 1. And what this line represents here is the variation of the delay of an inverter and a two input NAND gate depending on the, so the, uh, the y axis is the delay part depending on the x axis value it is h which is nothing but the fan out. So, as we increase the fan out the graph here tells us how much the delay of an inverter or two input man will be. Similarly, we could do this for any gate for example, you could try and plot this type of line for NOR2 and see how does it compare with the two input man gate. Obviously, for that you would need to know the value of GNP and we will come to that how the value of GNP is calculated. Now, let us come to uh, the computation of logical effort that is the value of G. So, by definition logical effort or G is the ratio of input capacitance of a gate to the input capacitance of an inverter delivering the same output current. In the past lectures we saw uh, we learned how to size a gate for example, uh, the NAND gate here this NAND gate 
we, we have seen why the sizes should be 2 to 2 and 2 when compared to an inverter. Similarly, we have seen for NOR gate why the sizes should be 4, 4 and 1, 1. I would request you to go back and, and again revise those concepts uh, before continuing with these slides because they are very, very, very much applicable and very much helpful. So, assuming these sizes are available, how do we calculate the value of G? Now, the value of G uh, for an inverter is defined to be 1, or you could say that uh, uh, C in, so the input capacitance seen by inverter, seen by input A is 2C, 2C plus 1C which is 3C, so C input is 3. For an AND gate, let us consider input A, A and B are same. So, A C is the capacitance 2C plus 2C which is 4C, so C in is 4. So, G becomes the C in of NAND 4 divided by C in of the corresponding unit motor which is 3. So, G is equal to 4 by C. For NOR case, AC is the cap 5C, so G is equal to 5 by C by the similar uh, concept. So, uh, this is uh, the way we estimate the value of G by counting some of it. You could also uh, do that um, measurement from delay versus sign out plots like given in the earlier slide, but this is the way we go. We see, uh, let us let's revise again. We see the input capacitance seen by a particular input and compare it and divide it by the input capacitance of a unit inverter. Unit inverter sees the input cap of 3. So, the input A here of the NAND gate sees uh, the D is 4, C in is equal to 4, 4 divided by C. This is the table. So, for, for a 2 input NAND gate, it is 4 by 3 for a NOR gate, it is 5 by 3 as we saw. As we keep increasing the number of inputs, the NAND equation becomes n plus 2 by 3, the NOR equation becomes 2 n plus 2. Please note that NAND and NOR are symmetrical, that is, all the inputs are similar in terms of capacitance. But for ZOR and NOR, this becomes different. So, for a 2 input ZOR, okay, the both inputs are same 4 and 4, but for 3 input, or one of the input sees higher capacity, since it is not a symmetric circuit. You could uh, actually go to the CMOS level and uh, verify that this will be with the case. Similarly, for prior state marks, uh, you know, the, the input, the value of G does not depend on the number of inputs, it, it is always two. You could again go back to CMOS design and verify. Now, from this uh, table, one thing is clear that the lower Okay, from the delay equations D is equal to G H plus C, it is clear that the gates with lower value of G will have lower delay. So, from the table it is clear that NAND in CMOS technology NAND is superior to NOR when it comes to delay, when it comes to being fast. This is why you see a lot of NANDs being used in design when compared to NOR. Now, this is the parasitic delay of common gates. I will come to how to uh, calculate the value of P. So, assume the value of P for inverter is 1. And let us go back to the. Uh, so, for value of uh, the value of P represents the inherent capacitance, that is, inherent output capacitance without the loading by definition. So, output Y here of, a, of the NAND gate, it sees the capacitance 2C plus 2C plus 2C that is 6, output Y of inverter P is the cap 3C. So, P is equal to output cap of this NAND gate divided by output cap of inverter which is 6C by 3C is 2. Similarly, for NOR, NOR C is 4C plus C plus C again 6C. So, again the value here is 6 divided by P of inverter is 2. We see the table. So, NAND and NOR are same in terms of the inherent parasitic capacitance. So, this is again in multiples of P inverter. So, NAND 2 input NAND gate is, gate is 2, 2 input NOR gate is 2. It increases as the number of inputs in P. So, uh, because the, the PMOS or the NMOS in parallel increases. 
So it also increases for tri-state map fit. Similarly, it also increases for Zor and map. There's no need to calculate the value of P and G for every uh, gate. You could uh, these are the most common gates, and you could look at these tables and use these values in the equations by deciding the number of stages. Let's take an example of a ring oscillator. A ring oscillator is a very very uh, common circuit, very popular circuit. To find out uh, how different parts of it is very useful in in qualifying the process. What does this mean is that the chip for I'm working on a chip. It's a big chip. It's a new technology. So what I could do is that I could place ring oscillator at some strategic points in my chip and uh, Ring oscillator, the output is nothing but a clock of some frequency. So that frequency is dependent on the inverter delay, delay of one inverter. So the uh, end stage ring oscillator, n here is always odd because when n is odd, this circuit will result into a clock output. So uh, the frequency of a ring oscillator depends on the delay of offered by one inverter, and therefore. It tells us how the process is doing. What, how the NMOS is NMOS fast, or NMOS slow, or NMOS is fast, or NMOS is slow. We can gauge that the performance of the inverter by using the remote filter. So let's see. Let's calculate the uh, the delay of this end stage ring oscillator. So the G, uh, since it's an inverter based circuit, the G is one. The electrical effort. H is also one since the fan out is one for all these inverters. The parasitic delay is one for inverters it's designed to be one. So the stage delay D is equal to GH plus B. We substitute these values, so D is equal to two. Now the time taken by this end stage. So for example, you give an input. You give an input here at this point. The delay from this input to this output is two is n into d. So the delay part is n into d. This delay represents the width of so, so the output is a clock. So the, out, the, the, the output is, is like this. So the delay of the high pulse or the delay of the low pulse is equal to n into d. So the total time period between these two. I pulses is 2 nd. So the frequency of the string oscillator becomes 1 divided by 2 nd. We substitute the value of d, we get 1 by 4 n. So we see that for a particular process, that is d, please know d is the time independent technology independent thing. So you have to put in technology numbers to get the actual frequency. So example here is the 31 delay phase string oscillator. In 0.6 micrometer process, frequency is about 200 megahertz. So uh, we see that the, the frequency depends on the number of stages. So as we keep changing the number of stages, the frequency can be. So uh, we we see how do we uh, calculate the delay of of some end stage simple circuit using the, the concept of logical effort. Again, please note that the delay offered by the interconnect. These nets here is not taken into account. That is why we call this type of exercise as logical inference. It is. It does not have any physical data. The interconnect, the wires that connect the gates together, represent the physical data because they represent these. These nets represent how the circuit is laid out, how the circuit is manufactured under the chip. But here we do not include that, so we call this as logical inference. That is why it is approximate and approximate in nature, but it helps us in making some decisions. Let's look at one more example. It is a fan out of four inverter. We estimate the delay of a fan out of four inverter. Again, inverter being the simplest of them, it is easy. Uh, the value of G, H, uh, the value of G is one. It won't change because it's fixed for a for a gate. Value of P is one, but now H here changes because H represents the fan out. So here since the fan out is 4, 
So the uh, definition of H is that it's C out divided by C in. So C out means this C out. So it's, it gives us the load of four inverters divided by C in. It's one inverter. So the value of H is four. So again, D is equal to G H plus C. So D is equal to five. Again, uh, so there are some values given here depending on the process. So uh, this, is, this is the formula f by c n s n i to meter process. So this uh, using uh, estimating delay of an inverter based circuit is as we saw very very easy because you see the value of g, you see the value of p. When it comes to NAND and all, it becomes slightly more complex. Uh, let's see. Now we come to multi-state network. Till now uh, we we have been seeing we saw how to estimate the delay of a single single stage or a fan out of four inverter for example which is two stages but a fan out of four. So logical effort can be generalized to multi stage network. So we define a few a few things here. First thing we define is the path logical effort. So G, the path logical effort G is the multiplication of all these stages, all the logical effort values of all these stages depending on the number of weights. Path electrical effort H is equal to the output capacitance seen at the end of the path divided by the input capacitance seen at the input of the path. We define capital F is equal to again multiplication of all the individual F values. So it is the multiplication of G I in H R. Well where I represents the stage one. Let's see this example. So you have an inverter. So now uh, also note one fact that when we start calculating the part delay in most of the cases the you will have no confusion in terms of output that is there is only one output, but you could choose what inputs you want to analyze the delay on. So for example, the analysis here the blue line here starts from inverter goes up to the output and there are multiple paths in this network. For example, you could have a path from this input of X to the output or you could have a path from this input of Y to the output. So the the part delay depends on the actual path that is what input do you choose here we are choosing the input at the inverter level. So the 10 here represents the sizing of the inverter so x and y let us say here and x and z. So g for inverter is 1 h becomes the load presented by here this so x by uh, load of inverter which is 10 here so h1 is equal to x by 10. Similarly, H2 is equal to Y by X, H3 is equal to Z by Y, H4 is equal to 20 divided by Z. The value of G, uh, G of NOR gate and G of NOR gate is written here on the table. So, in this way, you could have, so you could, uh, we could calculate the value of the total part delay by multiplying by having G1, H1, G2, H2, G2, H2, G2, H2. Ultimately, H will be nothing but C out that is 20 divided by input cap that is 10 is equal to 2. Now uh, the question is can we write F is equal to GH? The answer is no. Why? Now let us see paths that have branching. This is a very common uh, happening, it is not rare that path will branch out. So let us say we choose this path showed by the dotted blue line dash blue line there. So G here is G1 G2. So G is uh, for since being both are inverted so G is equal to 1 into 1 is equal to 1. H for this is 90 divided by 5 18. So G H is equal to 18. Now H1 uh, the stage effort here is actually 15 plus 15 that is 30 divided by 5 because this node here is seeing the capacitance offered by both the inverters. So it is actually takes H2 that is this, this stage 
this stage is 90 divided by 15 is the same. So, F by formula is G1, G2, H1, H2 is equal to 36. So, the actual uh, delay is 36, but if by mistake you assume that F is equal to GH, it comes out to be 18, which is exactly half of it. How do we factor that in the formula? Like this. We introduce uh, something called branching effort. The branching effort B is equal to capacitance of on path plus capacitance of off path divided by capacitance of on path. Or capital B is equal to multiplication of all the branching efforts, individual branching efforts. Now the formula is F is equal to GBH. Now in the previous example, these two branches are symmetrical in nature. So the branching effort using this formula will come out to be 2. So there are two branches here or we could say that this inverter here has two branches and both the branches are same. They offer the same load. So the branching effort becomes simply 2. We will use this concept in the coming time. Or you could also apply the formula that is this formula, this formula and see that the, B, the value of B is in fact 2. So now we define uh, the complete part delay to be DF is the summation of individual uh, is the summation of all FIs. Parasitic delay is the summation of parasitic delay of all these phases. So part delay is D is equal to DF plus T for a multi stage network. Now using this formula, this formula. We say that delay is smallest when each stage bears the same effort. How is this derived? You differentiate it and make make slope is equal to zero, and you use differential calculus to actually do this. You would come out with uh, the same result that the delay of a multi-stage network is smallest when each stage bears the same effort. Or, in other words. We say that each stage delay is, let's say there are n stages, each stage delay is nothing but f raised to the power 1 by n. So when all these stages delay are multiplied together, they will produce the least amount of delay. Therefore, we say that since each stage delay is f to the power 1 by n, then there are n stages, the minimum stage delay of a minimum delay of n stage path is number of stages multiplied by individual stage delay plus the parasitic delay seen by the group. This is the most important result of the logical effort. This enables us to find the fastest possible delay without even calculating the gate size. Let us see, let us see an example how it is done. Now, uh, one more thing is since uh, we said that in the previous slide that this formula here, it enables us to find the fastest possible delay without calculating the gate sizes, but the second step of that process would be to actually calculate the gate sizes. So, how do we do that? In fact, is equal to GH or GC out by C in, we know C out, uh, we will see how, we know C out. We know the value of GI and we have calculated the value of F. So, C in is equal to GI C out divided by the stage delay we calculated. This stage delay is actually same for all the stages since we, we assume that is the first thing. Now, working backwards, we could apply the capacitance transformation to find the input capacitance of each group. Uh, let us solve one problem. Now, in this case, we have to select the gate sizes x and y for the least delay from a and b. Now, what we know, we know the, the output capacitance, we know the, the size of the input, input gate, 
And in fact, to start the problem, uh, to, to take some values, what we could do is we would always know this mostly. We would know the output delay from the specification mostly, output capacitance, for example. We could start with any uh, size day. Then we decide the number of stages, and then we calculate. Then we uh, we calculate the sizes of the intermediate stages. This is how the problem is solved. So uh, let's see how the how this is done. So logical effort G is equal to the multiplication of GIs of two input NAND, three input NAND, and two input NOS. So two input NAND four by three. 3 input NAND 5 by 3, 2 input NOT 5 by 3, G becomes 100 by 27. Electrical effort H is equal to the output load C output load divided by the input load from where we start. So it is 45 by 8, branching effort. Now again we see that both the branches that is 3 branches here and 2 branches here they are both symmetric, they are all symmetrical in so we could use the formula of the capacitance or simply we could say that since they are symmetrical in nature the formula would come out to be branch effort of 3 multiplied by branch effort of 2, so 3 into 2 is 6, path effort is F is equal to GBH 125, GBH. Now here obviously it is not important to know the value of X and Y, it is not necessary to know the value of X and Y to calculate the path effort F. But assuming we know the values of the input capacitance, the output capacitance and the branching structure. If all these things are known then we can find out the size of X and Y for minimum delay. So we have the value 125 here which is the, uh, please note it does not include parasitic delay. The F only represents the part delay of all these gates, all these stages. Now, since it is a three stage part, we mentioned earlier, we saw earlier that the minimum delay would be when each stage makes the same effort. So there are three stages, since the delay is multiplication, then each stage makes an effort of cube root of F then we have the minimum delay. So best stage effort F is equal to F cap is equal to Q root of F which is 5. Now we calculate the parasitic delay. Parasitic delay you can look at the table so 2 input NAND gate is 2, 3 input NAND gate is 3, 2 input NAND gate is 2. So P is equal to 7. So now the stage delay becomes 3 into 5 which is G, uh, yeah, uh, delay is now GBH which is 115, uh, uh, 3 into 5 plus 7 which is 22 which is uh, since the delay of fan out of 4 is 5 so it says that it is 4.4 of F of 4. 3 into 5 because n is equal to, so n is equal to 3 and uh, the value of F is 5 uh, so this is the formula we use, I will go back to the last one. So we use this formula, n is 3, we calculated uh, since n is 3, cube root we calculated cube of cube root of f to be 5, we calculated p to be 7. So the delay here is 3 into 5 plus 7, 22. Please review this uh, slide very very carefully, uh, it contains almost all the concepts of logical effort, it also contains branching, it tells you the method of doing it that is first we calculate the path effort, then we first we calculate the path effort, this is the first step, next we calculate the best stage effort and third we calculate the delta. Now we go ahead and calculate the value of x and y. Now we saw that uh, in the previous slide, so we now use this formula, we will use this formula, G i C out i by stage delay f. So uh, the best stage delay this we calculated to be f, 
GI again will be gate dependent. C out will work from the the output side. We know C out, so we could know C in. So Y now is equal to C out that is 45 into GI. GI for a two input noise is 5 by 2 divided by the value of best stage effort which is 5. So Y is 15. Now this represents the size that is uh, the input capacitance. So 15. Now you have to go and size north such that you have 15. So here for example the PMOS width is given to be 12 and MOS is given to be 13. Uh, you can compare this with a, a unit size inverter and size it properly. So the sizing concept once you know that you have to maintain the input cap at 15, you can 15 C. You can go ahead and size the nor in such a way that input cap is exactly 15. You could size P and NMOS to be some value. So here P is 12 and is 3. Now we calculate X. X again, the C out here is 15. We, we calculated this to be 15. So NAND, the 3 input NAND C is the value of 15. Value of GI is 5 by 3 for a 3 input NAND. Again, divide by S is equal to 10. Again, the 3 input is size such so that is equal to 4 and is equal to 6. So this is the way we calculate the sizes of the NAND and NOR gate in the in the stage part, that is stage part. Now, uh, so in the previous example, uh, the number of stages was known beforehand. The problem was of calculating the size of the intermediate NAND and NOR gate. Now, mostly uh, in most of the cases, uh, usually the question is that from an input to an output. How many stages are needed? A path could have lot of parallelism, parallelism built into it, so that the number of stages are low. Or a path could have it could be a single kind of path, so the number of stages are high. So how do we decide whether we need high number of stages or low number of stages? Given the fact that minimizing number of stages is not always possible. For example. Uh, we are driving a 64 bit data path with a unit inverter. That means the, uh, the cap here is 64 and we compare the value of delay for 1, 2, 3, and 4 stages. You could go ahead, make this circuit on a paper, make this matrix circuit on a paper, and use the formula to do that. You already know the number of stages. I, I, we will just fill in the values here. So for n is equal to 1, the f is equal to 64, d is equal to 65 because the value of g is 1, p is 1. So d is equal to f plus g h which is 64 plus 1, 64. Here the d is 18 because the, uh, there, are two there are 2 inverters here. Uh, so g still remains 1. The uh, uh, yeah, so f is equal to 8, uh, these these values 18, you could go and draw it on a paper and, and verify the, the, these values. So the important point here is that uh, this is the equation we came up with, we, we know the value of f to be 64, we know the value of p to be uh, the number of sets and the number of inverters being n, so the, uh, we know the value of p to be n, now this is the equation we have. Now we are trying to find the minimum number of the best number of stages. We do not solve this equation actually, here the example is that we assume some, some number of stages or uh, and we, we find the value of the delay. We find that for three stages for this particular sizing, the path is fastest, it has a delay unit value of 15. Now see the difference between this, the number of stages being 1 and the number of stages being and also note that the delay decreases when we go from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3, but delay increases when we go from 3 to 4. This shows that minimizing number of stages is not always possible. There will be some optimum, optimum number deviating from which will always result in an increase in delay. How do we find an optimum number? That is the question. Now, this is the derivation given. 
for the form formula, but uh, I will not go deep into this. Uh, you could study these slides later at the home this course. Uh, this is not very important. The important thing is to understand this kind of equation to understand how this method is applied. So uh, uh, there is one graph here which, uh, which shows that uh, how sensitive is the rate to using the exactly best number of stages. So this is uh, exact. This graph is based on on this equation. Uh, so uh, on this equation. Where rho is equal to the best stage effort. So this this equation is has no has no closed form solution. So it is best plotted and found that for for some let's say for so this this x axis here is normalized. So n upon the the past number of stages, and then here is the derivative. So this shows that for some value of rho. Between let's say 2.4 and 6, gives the delay which is 15 percent of optimum. That means uh, maybe not always you will find the best number of stages, but you need to be close. Again, I would uh, stress one point that for practical world where you are designing circuits which have which have millions of bits or even thousands of bits, this cannot be done by hand. The synthesis tool like design compiler will actually do that for you and we will see that it is uh, quite possible that not all paths have the optimal number of stages it all depends on what constraints do we get. So uh, the number of stages depends on how much let us say from input to output. Let's say we define the delay to be define the constraint that okay the input should be the output to depend on the output after let's say x units. So the tool will choose n number of stages. Now if we say that okay now oh fine uh, I don't need n x I need something more than x. So now tool will actually change the value of n. So the number of stages the tool chooses is based on what constraints we get. This uh, type of analysis is very very difficult to do with time when thousands of bits are concerned and number of paths are concerned. But this actually will give you some idea. The point to understand here is that the multi stage network it is not always fastest when the number of stages are minimum. There is one some optimal optimal value of the number of stages which produces minimum amount of delay and in fact this is this concept not in this form but in a slightly more complex form is used by the synthesis tool to determine the number of stages. So tool has a choice usually tool has a choice of using let us say uh, an array of NAND gates or MUXs or NOR gates. So it uses a similar kind of analysis to find out what should the tool use. Now we come back to the decoder example and now we see that how do we apply logical effort to find out the number of stages here, how large should each gate be and we will calculate the delay also. Now uh, I will go back and forth in two slides. So the decoder effort uh, let us let us see the decoder design first. So the decoder will will uh, work something like this you will have the address bit the complement of address bit each of them goes to an inverter there will be a NAND gate. So for example to select word 0 now there are 16 words. So we need 16 select lines out of which only one will be active at one point. To get the value of the select lines we pass them through a network of AND gates for example this AND gate will select word 0. Then so it takes in the value of when a 0 a 1 a 2 a 3 are all 0. So we take all these 4 lines through one 4 input NAND gate connected to an inverter. So that uh, when all 4 are 0 this NAND gate will give 1 and uh, 
yeah. So when uh, sorry, when this uh, all four are zero, this magnet will yeah, magnet will be one, and correspondingly this will select this word line. And uh, so all these uh, word line values, all these word line outputs are excluded. That is, that means only one will be selected at one particular time. The point to note here is that each each address line will go to eight such NAND gates. Now we go back and see. So what is the electrical effort? The electrical effort is the load offered by the bit cells. So uh, we saw in the previous uh, slide that each word is 32 bit wide, and each bit represents three unit size transistors. So the load seen by the select line is 32 into three. So this is the load 32 into three, which is it is the output load. See how divided by input load, input cap. Which is each bit input can drive up to 10 unit size transistor. So it is 32 into 3 divided by 10 is 9.6. Branching effort is 8. Why? Because the circuit is perfectly symmetrical. One branch is same as other branch, and each input goes to 8 gates. So branches out to 8 gates, 8 NAND gates. So the branching effort is 8. So assume G to be 1 to make the uh, calculation simpler. We say that F is equal to GBH is equal to 76 by 8. Number of stages we start with as now. This is the catch here. You will not know number of stages at first. Uh, okay, you can only estimate and then choose some value. For example, in this case, n is equal to log F4. Uh, it's now n is equal to 3 dot 1 here. You could also choose 3. You could also choose 4. So let let's try a three stage design uh, according to this example. So uh, yeah. So logical effort now. So this design is again is a you see it's a three stage inverter, four input NAND and one more inverter. So G is equal to multiplication of G i's of all these stages. So it will be one. 1 for this inverter into 6 by 3 is the G of a 4 input NAND. This one represents G of this inverter. So it is 2. S is equal to GBH, G is 2, B is 8, H we calculated earlier it is uh, the value of H was 76.8. So rounded off F comes out to be 154. Each stage best effort stage delay. We know it's a three stage thing, so we take a cube root of this, it's 5.36. The path delay is 3 into 5.36 plus parasitic. Parasitic is 1 for this inverter, 4 for this, 1 for this inverter. Please note, uh, yeah, uh, uh, so parasitic, uh, you can we can go back at the table and see that 4 input NAND has in fact a 4 value of 4 for the value of P. So this D is 22.1. Again, the calculation of Z and Y is very, very similar. The formula is G I C out divided by F. So we know the value of F, for example, to know the value of Z. We know the value here. We know the load here, which is 36 into 3. Again, divided by, we know the value of F. We know the value of G I of this, which is 1. So we can calculate. So it is 96. 32 into 3 into 1 divided by 5.36 is 18. The value of y, so the uh, C out here is 18 into uh, into G, which is uh, yeah into G i, which is 2 divided by 5.36 6.7. So this uh, the calculation is very similar to the last example we saw. Now the question is that. Uh, we in, we chose yes we chose three stages which would have been optimal but what about the gates in those stages for example to start with we chose inverter four input NAND and one more inverter now this table here shows the value of different stages so for example we could use a NAND and an inverter based design the value here is two n is two similarly NAND and NOR n is two we saw this example where it is inverter NAND and inverter 
you could also have a four, so I uh, we, we saw that the value of n came out to be 3.1 and I said that you could start with either 3 or you could start with 4. Now if you would have started with 4 in fact 9 inverter 9, 9 to inverter 9 to inverter you would have in fact got the least delay based as the state of the list. So yes uh, this uh, logical effort will help you in finding the optimal delay but not necessarily it will be least. So there are options here available which have less delay than the value we compute. We, so we see that actually choosing n is equal to 4 gives these values 21.1, 20.5, 19.7 which are in fact all 3 are less than when we chose the number of stages to be 3. So that is why uh, I stress that this process is not easier. Uh, in fact, even if you see the number of pages being 5 and 6, uh, the delay here is 20.4 and 21.6, which is in fact less than 22.1, which we saw. So, uh, yes, this process uh, will help you in deciding something, but it will not necessarily be the best. That is why it is not humanly possible to do, do this for all the circuits available. Right? So, we review the definitions. The number of stages uh, for, for a path is n, logical effort is g, or for a path it, it is the multiplication of individual values of g. Electrical effort is c out by c in, for a path it becomes c out path by c in path. The branching effort formula is this, for a multi stage path it becomes multiplication of the all the branches, all the, branch, all the branching efforts of all the branches. F is equal to g h for a, for a stage. F is equal to GBH for a path, effort delay F, DF is equal to summation of all effort delays of all the paths, parasitic delay P, uh, P is summation of all the parasitic speed, uh, all the parasitics of all the gates, delay is equal to D is equal to F plus P, D is equal to summation of all DF plus P. So the, the algorithm is we compute the path effort f is equal to gbh we estimate the best number of stages log 4 of f uh, i'll come to this y4 uh, sketch paths with n stages estimate the least delay we determine the the best stage effort f is equal to 1 by n we find the gate sizes now again estimating best number of stages we could start with uh, so the, the next slide will explain. So, the, the limits are that it is a chicken and egg problem that means we need paths to compute G, but we do not know the number of stages without G right. So, the, the thing is that let us say for, for in, the, in, the, in the earlier decoder example to compute the value of G and to compute the best stage effort we need the path, but how do we decide the path unless and until we do not have the actual circuit with us. This, this is why it is a chicken and egg problem. So, we you start with something and then compare it with the other options you have. That is why it says log 4 f. What it recommends this slide recommends is that you start with a 4 stage network and compare. For example, we, we saw here. So here we actually started with a value with a value of 3. We could also have started with a value of 4. Now again, this will come from experience. So that is why you have to assume something, start and compare it with the alternative you want. It is a very, very simplistic delay model. It neglects the input rise time effect, it does not have the value of interconnect. It only tells it only works on the pretext that we want to minimize the delay. It does not work on area numbers. Now, when we come to synthesis, we see that delay is not the only important thing. There are actually three important things in a circuit nowadays in modern digital design the delay, the area, and the power. This model is only, only for maximum speed, it does not take into account the other two metrics. So, the logical effort is useful to understand 
how do multiple stage network work you could actually see you could actually appreciate few points here you could appreciate one that nands are faster than nors we saw that the value of g logical effort for nands is better when compared to nors so nands are faster than nors we could we could also uh, see that part delay is sensitive to stages and time what this tells us what this you you have you can appreciate more when you see when you actually come across a standard cell library you will see that a library has multiple flavors of cells it has nands it has nors it has two input nand three input nand four input nand it doesn't go beyond four i am seeing beyond four it has and or inverts different types of or complex with combining of and and or combining of nan and or or nan and or it has different combination so since there are different flavors different types of cells available the tool has more freedom in choosing and coming up with a better area or a better timing based on what do you demand of the tool so actually logical effort although it doesn't give you lot of tools to analyze it in on paper since it's a very complex problem it does give you insights into how the tool would work we see that paths are faster on paper we saw that when effort delays are close to four right that is why you had and that is why this formula n is equal to log n log 4 of f and the number of stages are log 4 of f so because we saw that so now see the delay value is independent of the technology here so we saw that when the delay value is four of a particular circuit n is equal to log of 4f will actually give you it will actually give you a very good starting point for the number of stages right we saw that the fewer stages doesn't mean faster path actually this is very much used by the physical design tool to buffer the nets so what physical design tool do is they analyze long paths and they have some algorithm it must be based on on a similar kind of model insert buffers or inverter to speed up that path to to actually insert the optimal number of buffers and inverters so the delay of path is about uh, log 4 of f uh, fan out of 4 inverted delay the flip side is that it requires practice to master but uh, as i told you don't uh, just study these uh, this lecture understand how does the delay depend on the output capacitance how does the delay depend on the number of stages but don't pay too much heed if you are not able to calculate the number of stages or the sizing of the bits when we start synthesis which is the core of this course which is the core area of this course we'll have two things available with us we'll have a standard cell library with different types of gates and actually the sizing of transistors there is is not visible to you what is visible to you is the the capacitance at the inputs and outputs of those those bits the timing parameters of these those bits that is how fast or how slow these bits are plus what you have available is a synthesis tool which will choose the gates for you what you control however you control the input parameters that go to that tool which helps it in making the decisions that is the decisions means what cells to choose how many series to choose we will see that in much more detail in in coming lectures so just study these slides and understand how does the delay of a multi stage network what does the delay actually depend on next uh, uh, we will see the uh, you will appreciate these concepts much more when when you actually work on synthesis thanks a lot